In this video, we'll be discussing RMF Task 2-3, Monitoring Strategy. Task 2-3 of the RMF is in Step 2 and aligns with Initiation in the SDLC. The roles responsible for this task are the Information System Owner or Common Control Provider. These roles are supported by the Risk Executive Function, the Authorizing Official or Authorizing Official's Designated Representative, the Chief Information Officer, the Senior Information Security Officer, the Information Owner or Information Steward, and the Information System Security Officer. Development of the Information Security Continuous Monitoring Strategy, or the ISCM strategy, is a critical part of the ongoing security control monitoring process. This document can be included in the SSP or can be a document unto itself. It should be developed early in the system's development. It allows the organization to understand the state of security of the information system over time. The ISCM can help maintain the initial security authorization in a highly dynamic environment of operation with changing threats, vulnerabilities, technologies, and mission slash business functions. The monitoring of security controls using automated tools and supporting databases facilitates near real-time risk management for the information system and should be used whenever possible. An effective ISCM really keeps track of what's going on in your enterprise or organization as well as with the security controls of your specific system. This program should include a configuration management and change control process that keeps track of changes occurring in the environment and the information system. These changes should be reviewed through a security impact analysis process. This impact analysis should ensure that proposed or actual changes to the information system or its operational environment do not have a negative impact on the implementation of the security control or the security status of the system itself. Changes to the information system or its security controls should always be managed by a board such as a configuration management board or a change control board, often known as CCBs or CMBs. The ISCM should also include assessment of selected security controls on a predetermined timeline to ensure controls employed within and inherited by the system are working as they should be and providing the correct output. And finally, ensure that your ISCM includes security status reporting to the appropriate organizational officials so they can get a feeling for what the security status is for your information system and information systems across the organization. The continuous monitoring strategy for the information system should include the security controls that will be monitored, what the frequency of this monitoring is, and how the controls will be assessed, or that control assessment approach. The strategy defines how the changes to the information system will be monitored, how the impact analysis will be conducted, and the security status reporting requirements, including who the recipients of the security status reports will be. All controls are not created equally. For this reason, you must set control selection criteria for the security controls you're monitoring. This control selection includes determining the priority of importance of the information system in relation to the organization or the enterprise as a whole. Determining the volatility of control, that is, identifying those controls that are more likely to change rapidly over time or those controls whose output is critical to be received in a timely manner such as firewall log files. You should also identify the controls that are critical to certain aspects of the organization's protection strategy. Those controls that are identified on plans of action and milestone should receive increased frequency of monitoring as well. The use of automation will facilitate a greater frequency and volume of security control assessments. You should also determine the frequency of assessing common controls that are inherited by the information system. 
At times, this frequency is set by the common control provider, but it should be validated to be sufficient for your system as well. Part of this process includes determining the trustworthiness of the common control provider. Organizational assessment of risk can also be used to guide the selection of specific security controls to be monitored and their frequency. The approach to security control assessments during continuous monitoring may include detection of the status of information system components and analysis of historical and operational data. And finally, don't forget to reuse the assessment procedures and results that supported in the initial authorization decision if these results are still valid and within organizational time frame requirements. Once your monitoring strategy is completed, it must be approved by the authorizing official or the authorizing official's designated representative. This includes the set of security controls that are to be monitored on an ongoing basis as well as the frequency of this monitoring activity. Ensure that the security controls that are included in dynamic systems are included in your monitoring strategy. This will account for subsystems that, that did not exist at the beginning of the system development lifecycle and will not place an unnecessary or unrealistic burden on the organization by requiring reauthorization of the information system each time a new subsystem is added or removed. Not compromising the accepted security posture of the overall system is achieved by including dynamic subsystems in the ISCM st monitoring strategy. In summary, in this video we have discussed the SDLC alignment with this task, discussed responsibility for completing this task, covered monitoring of security controls, selection criteria, the process for determining the frequency of control monitoring, and approval of the ISCM strategy. If you like this video, be sure to click on the thumbs up and comment below. Subscribe to the Cyber Recon channel and click the bell to be notified when we publish new videos. This video is part of the Cyber Recon RMF lab and training environment. Like all the training provided by Cyber Recon, our RMF training is built on the principle of multimodal training. Multimodal training exposes the student to training concepts in different ways, including learning games, video interaction, practice quizzes, instructor interaction, and hands-on experience in an environment that simulates working through the RMF in a real organization. This training also includes an updated RMF book and lab guide. Want to try out multimodal training for yourself? Click on the link on the right for a no-obligation trial of this training experience, including access to all of the multimodal training for Step 1 of the Risk Management Framework training program.